and welcome back. This is part two of the Network Lobby tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we set up the Network Lobby system over the top of the multiplayer car um, basic networking demonstration that we built in a previous tutorial. And we went through how to select um, the dedicated server and to join a game on your local machine or in a local area network. What I'm going to go through today is actually using Unity's cloud-based servers, um, which use this part of this lobby uh, system. Right, so to begin with, you have to set up your project as a multiplayer uh, system with Unity, which means you need to turn on those services. Now, to do that, in Unity, you'll find up in the top corner a little cloud button right here. Now, when you click on that cloud button, it will bring up um, a services tab and it will ask you to log in. Then once you log in, you'll get this panel come up where you can add other services uh, to your game, if you like. Now, we're interested in this multiplayer one. So let's uh, add multiplayer service to this network cars by clicking on it. Now it will come back to you and ask for you to go to the dashboard to configure it. So if you click on this link here, it's going to open up your web browser and it will take you to an area where you need to um, configure the uh, lobby. Um, so we've got a max players per room setting, which we've got as four in our um, actual code. So we can just click on save for that and then it will spend a bit of time configuring um, okay and then you'll get this sort of panel come up which is all very fine and you can click on save and then when you switch back to unity uh, there'll be a refresh button to um, bring all of the configuration into your project Now this is all set up to use Unity's servers for your multiplayer project. Right, so um, all we have to do now is to build it out and run and test it, just as we did before. All right, so this time I'm going to run in the editor one version of it. Now um, the first thing we want to do is to create a game uh, on the servers. Now if we just click on list servers, we can see that there's no uh, games currently running um, because no one has created a version of our game um, so let's go back so that means we create the first version of our game to run so our server let's call it test lobby one and go create now it will connect um, and then it will sit here and wait for players as before now it's not going to start until it gets two players and it's also um, not going to uh, allow more than four players in there either. Okay, so this is running, waiting for people to join. Let me just grab another version. Now, um, what I can do, because I'm running the same game, um, I can go list servers and it's going to connect to um, the Unity servers and ask for um, a list of the servers running this particular game and, and their name. So you can see here that we've got test lobby one comes up and um, that's the one that's being run over here. So I can join that. Okay, so you can see that the players have now come up here um, and player two can now join. Now player one hadn't joined before, they were just running the server. So if I now join in here, the match will start. And then we end up whoa, <laughs> in the same um, position we were before. So um, my other player is now gone. Um, I've still got the escape button that will bring up that there. Um, but now we're actually using the uh, Unity's servers to match make our actual um, 
game servers. So we can run the server on this machine and connect from another machine um, through the Unity services, which means that we don't need to be telling everybody what our IP address is. Um, it's just going to come up there in that list of servers with the game name that we've given it um, back in this spot here. Uh, okay, and that's all there is to setting up that as well. It's just so simple for something that's actually really, really complex. Um, if you want to go digging around in the code to discover just how complex all of the code is. But, um, you know, why write it yourself when the wonderful people at Unity have supplied us with this great little tool? So that's the end of the part two tutorial. What I'm going to do in the next tutorial is actually go back to that um, player info prefab that sets the player name and the color and show you how to pass that through to the car so we can set the player's name and change the color of the car um, for you. Right, well, fun networking and I will talk to you in part three.